Aswath, t- tell me you, kind of how you read uh, the tea leaves right now. No, in 2022 was a year where risk capital went to the sidelines, and I, I don't think it's coming back. But at the same time, if you look at tech, the big money-making tech companies are the ones that are bringing the market back. I mean, collectively, this just in the last four months, the the top decile of tech companies, the largest tech companies, are up 1.7 trillion dollars. I mean, that's that's pretty much the rise in the market. They lost three and a half trillion last year, so it's not like they're back to where they were before the market started its downturn. But I think the comeback has been almost exclusively in money-making big tech companies. It's this isn't a, a rally that's carrying all tech along with it. Right, and that is telling to you, Oswath, because you're simply looking for signs that you know the you know that the rally could be sustainable, and you're not seeing that yet, are you? No, and, and I think until we get some sense of direction on the inflation in the economy, you're not going to get a rally that is sustainable and broad-based. And I think we, we, we still have an incredible amount of uncertainty as to where inflation is going and how this economy is going to play out. Yeah, I, I'll circle back to it. I remember when we talked, I think, was it, was it Netflix or not Netflix? Because I know you bought most of the of Mama, not as we now call it. Not them. Netflix. Everything not. else but Netflix. That's, <laughs> everything but Netflix was the trade. All right, Chris, let me turn to you, because obviously I've seen the work that you're doing as well, uh, trying to figure out kind of where the strength and, and weakness is in this market. And it sounds like you largely agree about the narrowness of the leadership. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's, you know, there's seven stocks driving 80 percent of the gains. The overall narrowness of the breadth in the market to me is not an encouraging sign. You know, we have a situation where, you know, the market's focused on earnings over the next week and in the past week. But then it's going to shift back to the macro with the Fed meeting uh, and other inflation data coming up. And, you know, inflation's running hot and is sticky. And ultimately, we think the Fed's going to be higher uh, for longer. So the narrowness is, to me, not a good sign right. for, the, for the broader market. Where would you, I mean, Chris, if, if you had to then kind of rule out certain areas that you think are overvalued, like tech, are there any that are fairly or even undervalued? So one of the things we've been focused on is earnings quality within tech. So one of the concerning uh, signs and signals to us within tech is they're laying folks off. And some of the mega cap tech companies have been extending their depreciation schedules, which has boosted earnings, we think, 8 to 10%. Wow. Uh, most notably, Google, uh, or I should say Alphabet, uh, in this most recent quarter. So within tech, you know, given our defensive nature and bearishness of the overall market, we'd be in software-type names, large-cap names, like the Microsofts of the world that have posted strong results. But you got to be very careful. It's not going forward from here. I don't think it's just going to be by all big cap tech and, and, and make money. This is interesting. And earnings quality and concerns about it are, are really bubbling up this quarter. So, Chris, let me make sure people understand what you're saying. You so say the quality of earnings is lowest at Alphabet among some of the mega cap tech and media names because they extended the depreciable life for server and network equipment for a second time, shifting some expenses uh, about stock-based comps. So that is that the only company where you pick up on these concerns, or do you think there's a, a larger problem here? I think there's a larger problem. I mean, Alphabet did it most recently, but the company started to do this uh, in 2020. Uh, Meta's done it three times. Uh, Microsoft's even done it. And we don't see it in other areas of the market, right? So you ask yourself, why now? It's not as if everyone's sitting around the table thinking about how long they should depreciate their server equipment when they have bigger uh, problems to deal with. So it, it's curious that, that you know, always ask yourself, why now? And the fact that they're doing it again, to me, is not an encouraging signal in the future business, you know, of, of the future fundamentals of business. Sure. Aswath, it reminds me of something Mike Darda highlighted uh, earlier this year as well, that we've had operating earnings from the S&P kind of 25 percent higher than reported earnings across the economy. And a situation that we often tend to see at turning points when th- people are tr- kind of like Wiley Coyote, you know, they're <laughs> trying to pretend like they're we're not going over a cliff here. There is a disconnect between what's happening in earnings and what, what we're supposedly seeing in the economy, though we still don't see the tangible evidence that we're going to head into a recession. And I think you can see it even the aggregate earnings forecast for the index is there's almost been no dent in it over the last 18 months in spite of all of the talk of how the economy is heading towards a cliff. So either the analyst forecasting earnings are wrong or the macroeconomists are forecasting that the economy is weakening is wrong. But I think that uh, but but one thing to keep in mind with these big tech companies is even in as they report higher earnings, they're also being very clear that revenue growth is now down to single digits. 
These are not double-digit growth companies anymore. 